Hey there, gang. Welcome to my new two-part video series. I'm Todd Nock, and uh, this time I'm drawing BB-8 from Star Wars The Force Awakens on an orange post-it note. This video is sped up to two times the uh, normal speed that this was shot at, and uh, here we go. So, um, as I do with all my drawings, I start off with a rough sketch, and uh, even though uh, BB-8 is just a couple of spheres, really, with some circles and ovals on the inside, it's... Uh, it's still, you know, you got to figure out where all those little details are going to go. So using my pencil of choice, which is a mechanical pencil, the brand is Uni Kuratoga, a 0.3 HB lead is what I like to use, uh, what I use pretty regularly. And uh, I'm just looking at photo reference to get all the details down. Um, I chose my pose here uh, that I wanted to draw the angle I wanted to draw BB-8 at, but then I wanted to make sure I had photo reference so I could get the details of where all these different lines and cuts and, and shapes go to uh, get BB-8 looking as accurate as possible. Now I like to keep my pencils pretty rough, especially knowing if I'm going to ink this. So these pencils don't get very tight. I just have general placement of the different shapes and details, uh, enough that I know where to bring in my inks. So let's take a look here at the uh, finished pencils, or well, finished pencils, as finished as these are gonna be here in this sketchy stage. Now from this, I can see where I need to put my finished inked lines. So using a Copic Multiliner, uh, the 05 is what I'm gonna do for the outline of the head and body. Using an ellipse and circle templates, I'm going to use these drafting tools, which I use quite frequently, uh, to keep my lines crisp and clean. It's, 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 uh, you know, I like the way that looks. Now, important thing to know about circle and ellipse templates is many of them will have these little bumps on the plastic, which keeps the, um, the plastic raised off of the paper just a little bit. You want to make sure you have the bump side down. You'll see these little circles, little tiny dots on there. That's actually where the bump is pushing down through the plastic. Now the screen one doesn't have the bumps, which I have, makes me be very cautious when I'm inking with this one. Uh, it's better to have the ones with little bumps because that raising the plastic off of the paper keeps the ink from seeping underneath the plastic and smearing across uh, your illustration. But since uh, I'm aware of that, I've used uh, these templates quite a bit, uh, I, I kind of know how to, to be cautious when using my green one, but I prefer to have templates that have the, the, the inking uh, raised bumps. So if you get, end up getting some uh, circle or ellipse templates, those bumps are there for a reason, and now you know what that reason is for. So make sure you utilize uh, the correct side of your circle and ellipse template. Now I'm using a 0.1 Pigma Micron uh, pen. It's a similar type pen as the Copic Multiliner for the most part. Um, so I'm using a smaller size tip for the finer details. And I'm doing a lot of eyeballing of these uh, these different oval and curved shapes that I'm using from this uh, ellipse template. Uh, sometimes if I'm not certain if I have it lined up, I will go in and pencil it first to make sure the lines are dropping uh, where I want them to be. Uh, but uh, but for this BB-8 uh, illustration, I'm kind of just I'm just going for it, which is a bit risky. So um, feel free to pencil in uh, your lines with uh, the uh, with the template uh, first if if, you, if you're uncertain. And I, I do do that sometimes just to make sure I put the the, the line in the right place because uh, you know if you're going in with the inks, you 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 really don't have a much room for a margin for error there. You want to make sure you, you nail it the first time out. So um, so keep that in mind. So as I mentioned at the top of this video, uh, this is my first time drawing BB-8, so I needed reference. I pulled up Google reference of, uh, you know, I did a Google image search of BB-8, no shortage of images of BB-8, and uh, so it really helped me, you know, being able to see uh, all the different uh, shapes on this little this little robot. You know, there's there's a lot to going on on just these two circles. You'd think it'd be pretty easy, but when you really look at all those details, it can be quite difficult. So, uh, you know, I couldn't draw him, you know, completely straight from memory. I mean, I could get close. I could draw two circles, put some orange dots on there, a little black dot in the in the head, and, and, and people would recognize it as BB-8. But if I want to get really accurate with the details, I've got to pull up photo reference. And I do that, you know, for characters I've never drawn before. I also like to use photo reference for, you know, things that I need to draw, especially uh, for backgrounds and things like that. I like to draw a lot of things from my imagination. That is really fun for me and where I, I, I really have a lot of fun in my art is just thinking up something and, and then just going for it. But with that, I need to uh, also use photo reference. And so if I'm having to draw like 
vehicles like a military helicopter or a news helicopter. Those are two different helicopters. I need to research what are the differences between those two and what are the different shapes and lines on those things that I can use to make the shapes and lines I put down on the paper make it look accurate to the viewer so they can recognize that's a military helicopter and that's a, a, a news helicopter. Those are two different helicopters. Um, you know, I use it for drawing animals. You know, it's like uh, if I want to get the accuracy of the shape of a, a cow or a dog or a, a snake, you know, I want to capture that species and, and, and what are the different details that separates one cow, dog, or snake from another cow, dog, or snake, you know? So, uh, so these are things that are very important. Um, similarly, I, I, when I'm drawing a person, you know, I can draw a picture of a person straight from my, my brain. You know, I can imagine a person sitting in a chair, draw them, you know, right there, right, right out of my, my brain. But, you know, sometimes I want to mix it up. I want to study and research. How do people sit in chairs differently? What the, you know, depending on the types of chairs, are they sitting in a, at a, you know, a, a restaurant chair, you know, which is going to be a harder seat, harder back chair, which is going to have them sitting more upright, or are they sitting in a lazy boy recliner? So they're going to be really loungy and they're going to be more, uh, you know, sunken into the chair. And how does their body fit in there? How do the muscles, you know, bend or stretch or, or react to how they're sitting? How, do, how does the clothing fit? You know, how does how do the, the pants wrinkle from when, when, you know, you sit down and your legs are bent and the, 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 the wrinkles behind the knee or through the lap or the shirt? How do the arms, you know, is the arm on the armrest or propped up on the table? How are the wrinkles going to happen at the, the shoulders and elbows? So these are all the sorts of things I'm looking at and I'm translating that real life into my illustration to try to capture some semblance of reality, a believable reality, even though this is a fantasy world. It's, it's kind of the marriage between reality and fa fantasy, which makes it a lot of fun for me, but it helps to uh, look up uh, real life uh, reference. Um, and you know, similarly with a facial expression, I'll do a search for, you know, d depending on the gender of person I'm drawing, the type of emotion I need. Is the person angry or are they laughing? And what's the difference uh, on, on how those facial muscles pull? Uh, for a man or for a woman or for a boy or for a baby, a baby that's crying. You know, it's different size shapes, heads, eyes, mouths, and how does that all work? So photo reference can be very, very uh, critical and, and crucial in, in uh, getting diversity and accuracy in your illustrations. Uh, so I just kind of wanted to touch on that a little bit because uh, people tend to ask about, about using reference. So photo reference can help you a lot uh, when, when drawing your, your figures, your backgrounds, um, and uh, different uh, props in, 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 your, in your illustrations. So as you can see here, I've just been working on each section of VBA, getting all those de details in, in each little section. Uh, you know, I have to tackle it bit by bit by bit, and it really is an exercise in patience. Um, I've had a lot of young artists posting on the different social networks stating that they have a hard time sticking with a, an illustration all the way through to the end. They start it, they get part way, part way through, they lose interest, they get distracted, they move on to something else. Uh, they're, they're having a difficult time taking a, a, an illustration all the way to completion. You know, and that's, in some ways, it's okay. Uh, don't beat yourself up too much, but know that seeing an illustration to completion is a discipline. And to develop a discipline, we have to practice. We have to push through some challenges. So if you want to pursue art as a career, you're going to have to tackle those challenges. You're going to have to finish your artwork because your employer is going to count on that. And if you can't finish the artwork, then they can't continue to hire you. But, you know, if you're doing fan art and you, you're having fun just, you know, doing a quick sketch, you know, don't worry too much about it. Just have fun and, and just draw whatever you're capable of. Uh, but So there's a lot of different things to consider there. But if you want to be a professional artist, yeah, you got to work on pushing through that challenge. And, you know, it takes time. It takes work. And you can get there step by step. Doesn't mean you have to be able to do, you know, completely change in one day. But you do have to work hard so that you can change. You know, the sooner you can reach that next level helps you get to that, you know, working professionally you know, sooner than later. So, uh, so keep working at it. And as I often say in my videos, keep on drawing and keep having fun. Your art is a journey and each illustration is a step on that journey. As long as you're, you know, drawing on as regular basis as possible, you're going to be taking those steps. And most of them will, I believe, will be forward. Maybe you end up taking a step back every now and again. We all do. 
if, as long as you're still drawing, you're, I think it, most of your steps are going to be forward over the long term, especially when you look back and see what you've done. And, uh, and you, you hopefully you'll be seeing growth and, uh, and a difference in, in, in your art when you look at what you did yesterday to what you did three months ago to what you did a year ago. But you got to keep drawing regularly. So thanks so much for watching this video, gang. I really appreciate you joining me for part one. This has been a lot of fun to draw BB-8 for my first time. Here's a scan of the inks. Part two coming soon with the uh, Copic Colors. So thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for all the support, gang. It really means a lot, and I'll see you again real soon.